assalamu alaikum everyone so in today's lecture we're going to talk about our long term sources and in partic this particularly ch lecture we just want to talk about share capital debentures and your mortgages so without further ado let's begin share capital as you all must be aware of is basically the total value of capital or finance raised from shareholders through the issuance of shares so whatever is the value of the shares that you have already sold that is basically your share capital the total value now do keep in mind that the amount of share capital reported by a company includes only payments or purchases made directly from the company like what are the sold what are the shares that you have sold the later sales and purchase of those shares that is like when your shareholders st shall sell their own shares to someone and the rise or fall of their prices on the open market have no effect on the company's share capital so it doesn't mean that since your share prices are lowering your company's share capital is also lowered no that's not the case it's basically just the money that was raised when you sold those share shares after that what happened with the shareholders like if they did they, they sold it to open market or something that's not none of your concern because you have got your share your share capital like you have the money now of course the benefit of biggest benefit of having share capital as a source of finance is that it can provide you with substantial capital but as you can see there's no benefit section i've written over here just just drawbacks disadvantages because share capital is only and only a last resort for each for raising finance so whenever you are mentioning sources of finance don't go after share capital use some other refer to some other sources of finance if they have if the examiner has given any option to like if it's a general discussion go with debentures mortgages or higher purchase leasing or overdrafts bank loans duty and profits go with anything else but don't go to share capital directly because it's only a last resort and there are a couple of disadvantages related to it and uh, one point to note is that the share capital is only available for public limited companies no other legal structure can have share capital because you, they can't sell shares to public so that's so if someone asks for what are the possible sources of finance for private limited company or like okay private limited company can also raise share capital if they convert to public limited company that is but if they don't then sole traders and partnerships if they ask you what is the what are the sources of finance available for them so you don't refer share you can't use share capital over there because they don't have any sales to, shares to sell so do keep that in mind so let's talk about the disadvantages that why are there so many disadvantages what is that is what are the reasons that prevents us from using share capital source of finance yes the benefit is that it can help us raise a substantial amount of capital and that's one of the reasons why public limited companies have a lot of capital that through the issuance of shares but you can't always keep issuing shares and increase the capital share capital no that's not the case that first of all raising additional equity finance can be costly and time consuming so because costly because of the legal documentations etc that you have to go through the processes that you go through and it's cost time taking as well for those legal procedures so you can't use it when you are in a liquidity crisis when you need urgent cash to pay for some sudden losses or drop in sales in, for example recession recession of economy so in those particular cases it's definitely not a good choice the business will come under close scrutiny and the management will need to supply detailed information the management will ask to, to supply why are, why are we issuing shares what is the reasons behind that and the business may lose a certain amount of power to make management decisions that is new shareholders also have a say on how business is operated so suppose if they don't agree with your point of view and it just causes more conflicts instead of solving conflicts you are just creating more conflicts so of course your management decisions and all are your power management power is reduced the shares of the business will initially become diluted if the shareholders may therefore sell their shares and then increase vulnerability to take over so dilute shares become diluted because you know your if you increase if you sell more shares the existing value of the shares that value for one each share is diluted yes you raise sufficient share capital from this issuance of shares but that's for the one who issues the share the main owner of the business the one the shareholders don't enjoy having 
issuance of more shares because their shares value the val the share that they are holding their the, their value becomes diluted and existing shareholders therefore sell these shares and selling these shares causes more problem for the business because it increases the vulnerability to take over that some particular shareholders might have a majority of your shares and hence have a greater say on how the management is how the business is being run business may also become overcapitalized and finally new investors may assume high degree of control so as we just said that this divorce between ownership and management if more than 50 percent of shares is floated so that's one of the biggest advantages and all these reasons are the main cause of why we don't use share capital as a source of finance it's generally our last resort if we can't have some other sources of finance and do keep in mind that it's only for public limited companies only for public limited companies okay public limited companies only okay so moving on let's move on to our next topic that is debentures debentures are you can say these are also long-term sources of finance external that is and these are similar to bonds but some of you might be confused what a bond is we discuss that over the here as well let's just review for it it is first that debentures are special type of long-term loan to be repaid at some future date normally within 25 to 35 years of the loan being agreed so that as you can see is a very long term loan and furthermore another interesting point is that it is unsecured by collateral so you don't even have to pay off a collateral for that for such a long loan so why do the business why do banks offer this such such a long loan well it's because of the credit worthiness and reputation of the business for so the only these dependencies are only given to businesses who are credit worthy who have good reputation very good brand reputation, brand reputation so only such businesses are able to get debentures and that's why it's not able to, available to every other business it's only available to let's say very good private limited or public limited companies very large and credit worthy businesses okay so some debentures can be converted to equity shares that is these are called convertible debentures that because instead of like the payment that you have to make at the end of the time instead of taking that payment the one who issues who gives you these debentures they can instead ask for shares like okay they want a certain certain similar the same amount of shares in your company so instead of just paying you that you have do not have to repay to them instead they just take your shares some of your shares like they become shareholders and it is more appealing to investors so that way you can having convertible dimensions is more beneficial if you want to have more investors in your business and it also has a lower rate of interest because of the ability to convert into equity so you have a lower rate of interest that you have to pay it is similar to most bonds debentures pay periodic interest payments called coupon payments now this is the point where you guys might be confused about what is bond okay so, so as we said that it is similar to bond that you have to pay periodic interest payments called coupon payments so it's basically like you can say you have to pay small monthly installments but let's see what bond is so to understand this particular point bond is basically a fixed income instrument and <laughs> that in itself brings another definition that fixed income instru instrument is an investment that provides a return in the form of fixed periodic interest payments and the eventual return of principal amount at maturity so what is fixed income instrument is basically your investment that you make that you get some periodically payments like you get some monthly interest payments and you'll also get your amount that you have invested okay the amount that you had loaned the, the amount that you had invested so that is also returned back when once this period ends and you'll also get some small payments interest payments within the duration of this period okay so that's a fixed income statement you don't have to learn this definition of course I'm just here I've just given away this over here to have a understanding of this concept of debentures so a bond is a fixed income instrument that represents a loan made by an investor to a borrower so basically just a loan but it's also an like an income instrument like as we said that it's an investment so these can also be referred to as units of corporate debt issued by companies and securitized tradable assets that 
you can just trade these these are basically some of sort of assets that you can trade you that is you can sell it to some other people as well so some people who have this shoot these debentures they can also share this to the to some other people sell this to other people so they have issued the shares but they can just instead of waiting for this 24 25 periods they sell it to some other company and they give that some not the whole full amount but some amount whatever the price that they are selling it at they get that amount and the one who this debenture was sold to now they now have to wait for this maturity period to end and they also get these pay interest pay periodic interest payments okay so that's what it means by having tradable assets and bonds can be sold by initial bond holders that is one who provides loan the one who first give you the loan to other investors after they have been issued so a bond investor does not have to hold a bond all the way through to its maturity date that is the whole point that of bond that you know, hope you hope you get the idea of tradable assets over here and that it is basically an investment that provides return in the form of fixed periodic interest payments plus the same amount that you loaned you get the amount that you loaned that you were loaned like uh, as a person that who is taking this debenture i will have to like repay the amount in that long term but i also have to give some interest payments some periodic interest payments for that so that's basically the whole idea behind debentures and the one main pro 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 point about debentures is that it is only offered to credit worthy business and reputable businesses the contract for dev dementias features specifies features of dev offering such as maturity date like when the how long will it last and the timing of interest payments etc okay so a small mistake over here moving on and dementias generally have a lower interest rate and longer repayment date so these are very long term loans they have low interest rate and longer repayment dates uh, but the low interest rate is not just because of the long repayment dates it's basically also because of the credit worthiness and reputation of the business so finally moving on to the last topic that is mortgages these are simply a long term loan granted by financial institutions solely for the purpose of lands and buildings it is not used for some other purposes like debentures could be used for anything that they want that loan no this loan is special loan that is only for purchase of land and buildings why is that because the land and building that you buy that the business buys using this loan that becomes the security for the loan <laughs> so that's the funny thing that the property in question is used as security for the loan that is it acts as the collateral so the short term the long term loan that you get that you get for purchasing this land and building this land then becomes the collateral to that particular business that the business has an authority to sell this land if you default on the payment so that's how, how it becomes secured this long term is provided long term loan is provided and similar to most bank loans it has fixed or variable rates of interest and are particularly suitable when a business wishes to raise large sums of money so if you want to raise large sums of money you can just go for mortgages only but only when you are having chasing when you are raising money for purchasing land and buildings so the loans provided can be very long it can go as long as 50 years but generally it's 15 to 30 years now this point over here to in order to explain this point i have made this written this point over here so let's discuss this as well that stretching payments over more years reduces the monthly payments but increases the total amount of interest that the business will pay over the life of loan so that is your if you just increase the payment the duration of the mortgages that means your interest payments per month will be reduced but your total amount that you have to pay that will increase so how let's assume we took a 10 million loan for buying a build, building now if we go for 15 years that means you have to pay 1 million annually and we get a total repayment of we have to pay a total repayment of 15 million dollars that we took 10 million dollars and after 15 years overall we end up paying total repayment it's not like we have to pay it one time you have to pay 1 million annually for 15 years but alternatively we can have is we can increase the duration of the loans that is 20 million 20 million so 20 years and that means you have to pay just 0.8 million dollars and overall your total repayment will be 60 million dollars so your total repayment has increased but your annual annual amount that you had to pay has decreased these are just some rough figures that i took so 
that's it thanks for watching and allah is